Good morning. How are you doing today? It's so great that you could join us. Um, we are really excited to have you uh, with us in Santa Fe for the Wisdom for Better Tourism Retreat. Um, I would love it if you would just take a couple of minutes and just introduce yourself, you know, share your name and some of the amazing and inspiring things you've been part of recently. Jen, it's wonderful to be here. I'm so excited to be coming to New Mexico in October to be part of TTC. Um, my name is Gay Brown. I'm the founder of Greenopia and the author of Living with a Green Heart. Greenopia is a new platform for sustainable living that's going to be launching in Q2 and 2025. And um, Living with a Green Heart is the book I wrote about my experience of being a mom and uh, having a son who was ill and how to keep toxins out of your daily life, the simple steps you could take. Yeah, I love that. It's such important work. And I personally have overcome some, some health challenges. And I, I really appreciate the work that you're that you're bringing to the world. It's it's amazing. And can't wait to hear more about that at the retreat as well. Um, diving in a little bit, what called you to to join us at the Wisdom Retreat? What, call, uh, what called me to join you was I had had some several long conversations with Jake, who is on the top 10 list. Um, and my sustainability world. And he, what he started with Transformational Travel Council is, just I think is amazing. And the wisdom retreat, because I am an elder, I'm a, you know, in that age category now, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to get together and learn more about what uh, you were doing and also to sort of share my goals and aspirations as a woman in sustainability to possibly um, hook up with TTC and do some female trips, some of the amazing places in nature to um, allow women to decompress. I think we're all under a great deal of stress with climate change. And I think yeah. taking trips are definitely transformational. And I'm hoping to um, create some um, trips, some living with a green heart trips so that we can get um, women and ultimately families out in nature and understanding what a healing, um, how healing it is to be in nature. So that's Super excited about being at the retreat and getting to meet the other people. Um, but, but that's my personal agenda is to create sustainable trips for people to connect with nature and animals. That's fantastic. And I think your experience at the MEA campus itself is going to lend itself nicely there with just so much gorgeous landscape and incredible horses and equine therapy. I'm really excited for you. Um, my next question is, um, could, what are your aspirations or hopes for the future of tourism? My aspirations and hopes for future of tourism uh, is probably a little radical. You're the first to hear it. Great. I believe <laughs> that a long time ago, I worked for Travel and Leisure magazine, and I spent probably a third of my life on a plane. I traveled around the world as a senior executive. Uh, I was on the advertising sales side, so I was talking to the countries and airlines, hotels about advertising and travel and leisure, and then ultimately the LA Times. But what struck me um, so profoundly about traveling around the world and I've been to 30 countries um, is that every country took so much pride in what it presented to the tourist or the, the traveler, traveler, I should say, not tourist. And so, but what I, I'm not sure that the traveler really understood that. So I, um, if I ever have the opportunity, would like to present sort of like a, um, a global traveler's um, gratuity Sort of so saying when you come to France, for you to say, you know, through your airline ticket or through being there, I'm going to, you know, give $20 to thank you for creating such a beautiful environment so that I can be here and enjoy it. Because I think a lot of times people would give back to the countries or would like to say thank you. So I'm in favor of creating a thank you to um, the world for keeping their cultural heritage and their, um, uh, you know, the, the the landscape and everything so pure so that we can enjoy it. So anyway, so I've never expressed that to anybody, but it's always, it's been my secret agenda. Um, I and I, I, I also hope, my other hope is for, for the future of travel is that we have more opportunities, biofuels hmm. and other things like that, that was to lessen the damage to climate change. I recently, uh, was told by a doctor that I had some jet fuel in my blood. Wow. And that happens to pilots and flight attendants and people like me who spend too much time traveling. So note to myself, I'll be doing a little less air travel. But I right. want to, I'm my the future of this. I love to work with airlines. 
um, and airports about regulating the air quality um, wow. so that people don't have that issue because um, right. ultimately it's an unhealthy situation. And I'm not sure yeah. that the doctors can chelate it out. So, so the, the health of travel in the future, but literally the health of travel as well as um, exploring you know, the opportunity to say thank you. I love that. I love that idea of uh, what came to mind is gratitude gifts, you know, being mm-hmm. able to really gift gift gratitude um, and absolutely the health um, component of travel is one that is near and dear to my heart as well. Thank you for sharing that and for letting us be the first to, to hear about it. Very exciting. Um, you know, where you're going here at the MEA campus in Santa Fe, you know, there's there's an incredible culture around wisdom. And so we were curious, what role do you feel that wisdom plays? in tourism, not only today, but sort of in the future? The role that wisdom plays um, in for travel in the future in tourism is really truly, I think, just really bringing out more culture in terms of the travelers when they go. Um, place like Santa Fe, where I've spent a great deal of time before, it is so rich in its cultural experience of the Native American Indians and the culture there. I hope, and as you know, we... The decades roll by and my children, you know, travel more, that the opportunity to experience the wisdom of the cultures in those areas is really brought out. Um, another idea that I had, which is, um, again, I've never told anybody before, so you're getting the scoop here today. I don't know why I'm chatting away. You made me feel really comfortable, Jen. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, you're, I'm glad. But, um, <laughs> years ago, when I was in the travel business, I thought, wouldn't it be nice if in the travel business, there was a sort of same thing as like the Uber drivers. Let's say I live in, you know, Santa Barbara and there's a middle-aged woman who comes and she's um, single like me and she wants to sort of just see the sights or go on a hike or something. And really, I think that the residents of places are the best guides um, or like you're a mom and you have a, you know, you know what yeah. the park, the best parks are for kids. So I would love to see in the future tourism some way to involve um, people, I mean, people who are available um, to want to be partially the guides of their hometown. And um, I don't know how that would ever happen, but I know would ever believe Uber would happen. So you never, we can have Uber guides, I guess, one day. So that is, um, well, that's the little scoop for me that I'd love to be involved with oh, connecting people fun. and with the travelers. Yeah, it almost sounds like a matchmaking. Um, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. I mean, you've already made one app. You might as well make another, right? <laughs> Let's wait till the first one gets out, Jen. But yes, 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 yes. I mean, that could do with TTC or someone on the campus. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's a great idea. Um, the next one we've got is why is transformational travel important for you? I would say that transformational tra- travel is important. Uh, Council is important to me because I find travel transformative. I grew up in Kentucky. And I, my parents never went to Europe. And so my gap year after college, I traveled in Europe and the U.S. It was completely transformational. And I think that that's what travel is. And um, I believe that it's in so wholeheartedly being able to travel um, lightly on the earth so that you, we can still protect the culture and the heritage, but really enjoy those transformational experiences. Um, Because I think it's those things that we remember at the end of the day when you talk to any older person who's in their 80s or in their 90s and say, looking back on your life, what was it? Those, what are the high points? And invariably, every one of them will talk about their children and their grandchildren. But a lot of them talk about, oh, when I was in Machu Picchu or one day when I went to, you know, for the first time I saw the World War II beaches in Normandy or whatever there, you know, I went to Africa and I was standing in the Serengeti and the sun was setting or having a sundowner. And I realized how vast, you know, this planet and old is. So I think it's really, truly travels transformational. And I think that your, um, the way Transformational Travel Council is setting it up is magnificent. I think we should all be given mandatory travel allowances by our companies to do something because I think it refreshes your soul and your heart. Oh, that's so wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I can't wait to hear your answer to the next question. Um, If you had a magic wand, that you could just wave and change one aspect of tourism or travel, what would it be? Uh, it would be the um, jet fuel. Okay, that was a I quick, mean, I think easy, yeah. Quick and anywhere easy. you we go, almost anywhere we go, uh, requires claim. And I think at the end of the day, <clears throat> there's an opportunity to change 
um, that aspect of it. Now, I mean, not just from a health point of view, but just in terms of climate change, I, I just wish there was just a way to sort of, you know, sort of not beam us up, <laughs> but like in the Jetsons, yeah. years ago, there's this cartoon called the Jetsons, but just oh, I travel without, travel without pollution. That would be great. That would be my first choice. All right. That's, that's wonderful. That's a perfect answer. And, and you're the first one that I've heard really emphasize that. So it makes me really, really happy that you're going to be bringing that to the retreat. Thank you. Um, last one, Roundup, any parting words or wisdom that you would like to share? Well, that's an open-ended question. <laughs> Purposefully. <laughs> I, mean, I, you um, you know, I would just say my parting words of wisdom are that being in nature has transformed my entire life. Um, when I was a kid in Kentucky, our, we had a high school teacher who took um, students to Canada in the summertime and we canoed in the Boundary Waters. And we would go out for four to six weeks at a time and we would not see anybody. There would just be just, just, not, just nobody but nature for weeks on end. And I think being in nature, understanding the relationship humans have to nature, I think is just so transformative. So my, you know, I love to see more young people involved and having the opportunity to go in nature. And I would just say, you know, getting out in nature whenever you can to sit on a beach and watch the sunset, even sit in a park, you know, under a tree. Um, yeah, just say more time in nature for all of us. Absolutely. I, I, I profoundly believe nature is our, our greatest healer. All right. Well, thank you for joining our recording. I'm going to go ahead and close out our recording now. Thank you, Jen.